Jessie Fawcett was an African-American woman who became a poet, writer, and editor. After being the first African-American to graduate from the Pennsylvania High School for Girls, she went on to study at Cornell University. Afterwards, she taught French in Washington, D.C., before getting a job as an editor at mm. The Crisis. This is fantastic. Needs a few tweaks, but besides that, I love it. Mr. Hughes, Mr. Hughes, please, may I just have a minute of your time? I'm such a big fan. I have a few questions for you. Of course, my boy. On or off the record? Off the record. Ah, oh, I am such a big fan of your work. How did you get to be who you are? It's not as easy as it looks. Really? Because I, I would really like to learn. Maybe if I could ask you a few questions, like, how, how did you get to be so big? Like, how, what was, what's your secret? Well, I really have Jessie Fawcett to thank for that. Uh, she's the editor at Crisis. Oh, come on, Mr. Hughes. There must be more to it than that. Do you think she'll publish my work later? Well, I don't know about that. But I do know that Jessie is the midwife of new and creative writing. Because of her, many spectacular writers are now well known, including myself. That's amazing, Mr. Hughes, but I have one more question for sorry, you. Sorry, my boy. I've got meetings at three o'clock. Uh, but Mr. Hughes... Oh, I I'm very sorry. I have to go. Oh, okay, I, I understand. Extremely busy, don't you now? Yes, I'm yes, sure. Yes, well, ta-ta. Take care. Uh, uh, good luck okay. with that. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Hughes. Goodbye. As an editor, Fawcett gave birth to many of the famous authors of the Harlem Renaissance. At the same time, she was writing her own works. Herbie, dear, can you read off this poem I just wrote? Tell me if it needs any tweaks. Now, Jesse, you know I'm not good at editing anything you write. To me, everything you write is beautiful, and you change it a thousand times, but every time it is perfect. Well, that's sweet, but I really need to know how this sounds. You may be satisfied as it is, but I have to make sure it's absolutely perfect. Well then, my dear, why don't you read it out loud to me? You know I love it when you read your poems. I call it the silence. I hope when I'm dead, I shall lie in some deserted grave. I can't tell you why, but I would like to sleep in some neglected spot, unknown to everyone, by everyone forgot. There lying, I should taste with my dead breath the utter lack of life, the fullest sense of death. I should never hear the note of jealousy or hate, the tribute paid by passerby to tombs of state. To me would never penetrate the prayers and tears that futilely bring torture to dead and dying ears. There I should lie, annihilate, and de my dead heart would bless oblivion, the shroud and envelope of happiness. Wonderful, as always, but so sad. Where'd you get the idea to write about something like that? During my trip to France, the trip really got me thinking, and, well, this was the outcome. Well, it is beautifully and artistically written, as I suspected. But just one thing, you put so much emphasis on the word oblivion that I think that should be the title of the poem. Oblivion? Hmm. I like it. In truth, I had been unsatisfied with the name ever since I wrote it. Well, there you go. Fawcett was most known for her contribution to The Brownie, a children's story written in The Crisis. However, she is also responsible for three books and several poems. While she was seeing the potential in others, it did not take long for someone to see the potential in her. Jesse, there's something I need to discuss with you. What is it, boss? As the voice of all of NAACP, it is my honor to ask you to represent us at the Pan-African Conference. Me? Surely there's someone more qualified. Someone more qualified than you? Never. So, do you want to go? Yes. I mean, yes. I would love to. Wonderful. I shall have your transportation arranged. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People which published The Crisis, proudly had Fawcett represent them in the conference, and as a result, the Delta Sigma Theta sorority made her an honorary member. After her husband Herbert's death, Fawcett moved back to Philadelphia with her new brother-in-law. Jesse Fawcett then died on April 30, 1961 from heart disease.